All right, up next, we're leaving the Lexus for a little bit. This is a 2001 Jaguar XJ8, I think. It doesn't matter. No crank, no start. So we're going to start with just scanning it. See what the symptoms are. You know, turn the key on. You got the warning lights. Check engine light. Turn the key to start. Absolutely nothing happens. Okay, so let's see if we can at least talk to it. It says system failed to read the VIN since it's pretty old, so we'll put in the VIN and try to talk to it. So here's a nice codes list. We have some, you know, it could be a, like a common feed problem, a fuel pump, system voltage malfunction, coil H, camshaft timing, solenoid 1 and 2. Can link engine control module instrument cluster network malfunction. Then there's a P1260 security input. So if it has an immobilizer, that's a variable. And system check complete, P1111. So where where do we go from here? I mean we have a lot of codes. We need to pick a direction. Let's just jump in to the data stream. Back out of here. Related data stream. Select the DTCs you want to view. I don't think I've tried that function before. That's but, nice. Well, let's let's see. Let's see. Twelve sixty, right? That's the one we want. And security input. Security acknowledge signal is hardwired from the engine control module to the body processor module, key transponder module. The engine control module sends a signal when the ignition is on and the key transponder module has transmitted the OK to fuel signal. A diagnostic trouble code will be logged if the signal is not present. Hmm. Okay, and that we have that trouble code. So Mike, in this case, would you erase the codes and try to start it and see if that code comes right back? I would do it. You would do that. Is there any way you can keep the history of the codes in there? Uh, we, yeah, we can just save it. Yes. Sa mm -hmm. Save save the report. Confirm. And we have them all on camera. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, because surely what is happening, we don't need to know any, you know, any of this frame. stuff. No, surely, I mean, it's happening right away. So. Yes. So, yeah, that, that's, you know, a difference in approach because obviously you don't want to jump in and erase the codes right away because you could have valuable information stored and you want to go back to it and then it's gone. In this case, the problem is happening right now. We have like 10 codes. You know, we just want to start from scratch in this case since the problem is reproducible and it, if you know if it's current, it'll pop up right away and we can focus on it. And that's so that's the approach we're going to do right now. So let's go back. Clear fault memory. Okay, read fault code. There it is, 1260, security input, right away. Yeah, so this is this sounds like that's, you know, I would think if we can get another key, that's the easiest mm. thing. I think they don't have another key. It doesn't like the key. So there's a chip in Yeah, this here. is all sound with like a resistor type, uh -huh. you know, so. We can probably try to see if we can read something out of the key or look in, you know, wiring diagram to see what exactly the module is, which I know is mm -hmm. it's the old mobilizer type. It's a 2001, right? 2001, yeah. So can we go to the mobilizer module and read any data there? Is, there, is it yeah, smart uh, enough? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Security locking module, SLM. Uh -huh. That's the one. Data stream. No data stream. <laughs> How about codes? Yeah, let's try. No, it doesn't even have a code option. It's the ECM, TCM, ABS, instrument pack, body processor module. You try that one. Mm -hmm. And key transponder module. Let's try that one. Mm -hmm. 
How often do you see old Jaguars in your shop, Mike? Yes, we actually have a few customers that got this exact uh, car. I got one uh -huh. with a green one and one with this same color. So, uh -huh. yes, we do work. I haven't got the experience of not having a star situation like this. Okay. But, you know, I know they do have uh, kind of like an immobilizer system. It's an old system. So, But I know that you can, you can put the key on, uh -huh. make sure it's locking and unlocking. Okay. And uh, start, you know, testing with that. Mm-hmm. So, the key transponder module, let's see, read fault code. There's no data stream in here, so that's, you know. Yeah, that might be for a newer module. You know how these right. uh, softwares are, like, for different... Mm-hmm. Keys on. And... The body processing module in this one is right behind the glove box. Okay. Yeah. I actually took one to fix at home one time with uh -huh. a problem on the on the rear lights. I don't know if you saw that video. It was a, a problem with the brake lights. One worked, the other one didn't work, hmm. and it was uh, the wattage of the bulbs that were being used. Wow! You're, these cars are very specific with that. You put a, a higher wattage bulb, mm -hmm. it will not work, and it's nothing wrong with the system. It's just <laughs> the wrong bulb. Crazy! So, oh yeah. <laughs> it's not just a switch. It actually senses the current. Going through the bulbs. Yes, it's a very smart system for a 2001. You know, Absolutely. It's, it's a little, you know, the obviously old mm -hmm. school communication wise. Obviously, it's 2001, but it is, it is good. Mm -hmm. Well, unfortunately, it says fail to read DTCs. Mm -hmm. huh, not much luck. Uh, all right, so we can't talk to the key transponder module, the KTM, and the engine computer. Pulled up some data pids like security acknowledge, security received data byte, sensor power supply monitor, four volts. And when you turn the key, nothing happens. If you take the key out, you know these voltages will go away. Put the key in, turn it to on. So we're and when we crank it, there's we're not getting a security acknowledge. That should turn to a one to allow the car to start. And we can't talk to the key can't talk to the key transponder module, the KTM. So everything's pointing to, yes, a security problem. We need to get to the KTM. We can also go to the BCM and look at data pits there to kind of say, you know, is the KTM offline for sure? Look up some code description and operation for the 1260 code and hopefully uh, narrow it down to you know maybe a bad module or power ground something because the you know we talked to the shop owners here about the history of the vehicle he said the customer was driving to work drove it fine this is his daily driver parks it comes out after work goes to start it no crank so something happened you know the key is original something happened there where now the car is just refusing to start because it's immobilized so that's that's kind of the history okay so after digging around in the BCM we have weird British logic where zero means true and one means false and this thing basically shows is you know which position the key is in which position the selectors in if you're cranking the engine everything makes sense everything follows along so for example if we put the key in and crank it that ignition crank switch data pit should turn to zero which means true so I'll crank it and zero so we're cranking okay next page we have some security data pids like these right here, security acknowledge input one means false. We did not get a security acknowledge. LED direction, uh, security status LED output is false. So LED is not on, definitely not on. Key and ignition switch zero, that's true. So yep, key's in, everything's good. Ignition feed is good. Turn the key off, that'll go to one, right there. So. Everything going to the BCM, it knows where the key is, right, right? And then 
what we're not getting is that security acknowledge yeah so what we can have proved by doing this is that when we move the key the BCM is receiving the signals yes Do we have a good key we don't know that because and we know by now that the cut of the key is allowing it to move the cylinder but is mm -hmm. the signal being produced on that transponder either the key or the key transponder which is a small module on this you know on the on the key right cylinder, on the cylinder correct? on the barrel uh-huh and that sends a signal to the BCM and the BCM to the engine computer okay so so in this case what are the possibilities you said if you have a bad key right that's one mm -hmm. our key transponder module KTM we can't talk to it with a scanner correct and again maybe the scanner is not capable or the module is actually offline something's wrong with it that's a, a variable so I think we need to pull up a wiring diagram of this KTM see power ground communication whatever it has mm -hmm. just check those if those check out and we can't talk to the module and it's not sending a signal you know that really narrows down the problem and I think we're almost done so a quick check here without tearing you know, the steering column apart and checking for powers and grounds is to see is the key transponder module actually alive when you turn the key so this LED right here will pick up, you can see it's a coil of wire wired to the LED. So if there's any field that induces current here, the LED will light up. It's a pretty neat, simple tool. I actually got it from Keith. And we turn the key, check out the LED. See the red? Maybe if we put it in the in the shadow here. Ready? See it blinks? And again. There you go. So that means the KTM is actually trying to do something. It has powers and grounds, so we don't have to check that manually just because we saw the LED light up. It does not mean that that signal is getting to the BCM or that the actual read of the key is correct. It still say the key is you know not correct for this vehicle even though it is now in that case would it light up the security light that's a good question all right so we're at the engine computer here's the wiring diagram key transponder module there's two wires going to the engine computer and the security acknowledge goes to the BCM body processor module there's also another two wires, yellow and red, yellow and black, going to the BCM, and that's the engine cranking control. Okay, we're worried about the key transponder module. So at the engine control module, what do these two wires do? The yellow and the white. Security acknowledge and OK to start. We got them on the scope. Channel 1 is at battery voltage. Channel 2 is at zero right now. Channel 1's on the yellow wire. Channel 2 is on the white. Yellow is security acknowledge. White is OK to start. When we turn the key and crank it, nothing happens. Yeah, go ahead. Why you can crank it? Sorry about the glare. The key is out. Key's out. Release it on. Yep. And start. And start. So no change at all. The transponder module is not doing anything with these two lines to enable crank or start. So again, we're focusing on this. Let's try to find that and do some checks at the key transponder module. All right, so there's the key transponder module. We have it unplugged and we're just doing power and ground checks because we need to check those, make sure the module is at least powered up. So that's the power wire, pin four. If we test, touch the test light to ground it lights up so we have good power and then there are some pins check the ground pins let's see and those were pin 12 black and gray yes we have a light constant ground and then there's two ignition switch Something grounds ready, yeah you can turn it all right, so that's ignition coming on now. Yep. 
Okay, right. it stays. Mm -hmm. Take it off. Yep, and then the next one. I'm going to switch it back on. Uh huh. Now. Yep, we got a light. And then off. Okay, so those all check out. So the only variables remaining is module and key. And we got the power, right? So you show that too, right? We got the power. Yep, yep. I, I can. I got the power connected to the oh, yeah, test light. So mm -hmm. test light lights. We got powers and grounds. So now it would be really nice to have the second key to rule out just a bad worn out key, right, Mike? Correct. Yeah. That's the logic. We did the test with the LED ring now the key, and you know you can see an activation on the coil in there, but that doesn't tell you that the key is actually good. It's just hmm. you know producing the signal because of the coil. Okay. Okay. Yep. So right now. And if it's not the key, then it could potentially be the module itself, the key transponder module, mm -hmm. going bad, even though it's not a common failure, you said. Mm -hmm. um, but that's where we are, so in order to 100% finish the diagnosis, we need the second key. And the owner says he only has one key. So in this case, we might have to leave it at that. It's a security problem, narrowed it down to here, and so it's either key or module. Those are the only two options, and then the owner will have to get a new key, get it programmed, and see if that works. If it doesn't, then, you know, module I mean, has everything it needs. Either way, you should have two keys, no matter either, what. Either way, this yeah. Were, you know, this key is almost 90 years old. It's wear out, so <laughs> it's a little hard to uh, not call it bad because mm. you have no activations when it should be activated in the, the, exactly. you know, the security part. But Okay, yeah, okay. we got to go that way, definitely. Okay, so I think that's it for the Jaguar. Let's go back to the Lexus. Yep. But you cannot say that because, you know, <laughs> I mean... So, yeah, so last check, with the module unplugged, we do the, uh, the key ring check, and the LED obviously does not light. And the fact that it does, with the module plugged in, you know, it, the module is doing something. It's, it's trying to read the key. Yep. So you're saying 99% sure it's just a key? Just a key. Just a key fault. Yep. Okay, I, I have to agree with the logic, yeah. Um, yeah basically... You have a response every time you move that, it means that it's actually a signal being sent by the key transponder. Mm -hmm. but is the key right? No. Does mm -hmm. we have the P1260 saying there is a security mm -hmm. not allowed. So for me that sounds like a bit key. Okay. Okay, fair enough. That's a good good conclusion. I feel comfortable leaving it there.